You're probably wondering why. Why do we care so much about what celebrities wear on the red carpet? Why are people going to literal prison for bribing their kids way into college? Why is there a why at the beginning of the name Yvonne? Well, today I'm not going to answer any of those questions. However, I will answer the following. Why am I making this video? Well, my goal is to show you that the sky's the limit on what you can make. You don't have to be rich or a celebrity to look like a rich celebrity. Why this dress specifically? Well, let me take you back about a year ago when I made the holiday Barbie dress and I thought, this is about as nightmarish as a project can be. So much tool. Then when I saw the Grammy's red carpet pictures, I thought, yikes, I hope no one asks me to make that. Then when I said I'd let my followers decide which Grammy's look I would create, I realized they have some sort of vendetta against me, or just greatly overestimate my abilities, but they voted on the tool monstrosity that is Ariana Grande's dress. Don't get me wrong, I love it, I think it's gorgeous. I just question whether I'll survive this experience. You also may be wondering why I'm filming on my kitchen floor. Well, I don't want you all to get stir crazy, but there are only so many places you can film in a 30 foot home. Which brings me to the last why. Why haven't I done an RV tour yet? Well, I haven't done a makeover on my bedroom or my bathroom yet. Because I'm very indecisive, so prepare for several Instagram votes next week asking for RV decoration and just help. I just need help. Let's start this thing. <laughs> This is 80 yards of tool. How is it that 80 yards of fabric does not look like it's enough? I'll tell you how. Because this fabric is extremely thin and thereby reasonably see-through. That is why in the small yet thriving world of YouTube comedy sewing tutorials, we call this fabric demonetization bait. Let me give you an example. Acceptable. Demonetizable. So what does all of this mean? Well, it means we need a base layer, something to go at least under the tool of our bodice, preferably a solid gray fabric. Now, in order to keep the budget as low as possible, I didn't want to go to a regular fabric store for this. So we're at Goodwill. I'm going to try to find a base dress for my Ariana, Ariana, Gra Ariana, Gra okay, I don't see a dress that will work, but you know what I do see? Adult diapers. All Josh, Josh, out of the, no, could you get, could you go out of the, adult diapers, the whole bin. Okay, for anybody else who's colored Easter eggs all throughout their life, you know that napkin that you dab the excess dye off onto? Well, I found it in dress form. Now, I really did like my outfit this day, which is a dress I thrifted and altered a few years ago and some high-heeled boots I also thrifted, but I wanted something that felt more comfortable and casual because I had a lot of errands to run on that set of sound, so I got this t-shirt and purse, which didn't accomplish anything, but I also got this t-shirt, which makes me feel really smart because it says Westminster College on it, and I also found these shoes for $10 that I know have a name. Trendy girls wear them a lot. I just can't remember what they're called. <laughs> Mystic School Transportation. That is the most intense generic knockoff of the magic school bus I've ever seen. After that purposeless fan roast, Josh and I played a little pool. There are a few notable things about this clip. One, my friend Josh is super supportive. Hey. Two, my victory dance is cringy. Three, do you see the door? Do you see that? Let's do a slow-mo instant replay. Wow, painful, bad idea. But look, what? No, I'm not scared of ghosts because one, I know Jesus will protect me, and two, I like to think that it's always one of my dearly departed pets, but it must have scared Josh because he went back to Ohio. So I went back to my RV with the base dress I found at Goodwill, which was this. Now, unfortunately, when I tried it on, I found out that I loved it, and I really only needed a little bit of the fabric, so I decided I would just cut off the bottom third of it. <laughs> and then I can wear it like this. Then I would use the scrap of fabric from the bottom to create the underlayer of my bodice. Now for the underlayer of your bodice, you'll need about as much fabric as it would take to cover two cats. I was going to try to drape it really nicely and professionally, but then decided to just wing it because apparently winging it can get you an Oscar for best costume. So I'm just, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I really need to settle down with that. Sticking with the cat method of measurement, cut out a piece of tool that is long as a cat from tail to nose. And how many of these should you make? Well, approximately as many as there are kittens in a litter. Bunch these pieces up and pin them to the top of the inside of your bodice, then sew them in place. After conquering that step, flip the tool over so that it hangs like a curtain on the front of your bodice. Pin the layers down until they meet your standard of prettiness, and then top stitch across. Admittedly, bending over and pinning this much does take a toll on your fingers and neck, so if you find that to be the case, I recommend moving to a retirement community that offers anti-arthritis water aerobics. That class left my joints feeling loose and relaxed for my Galentine's evening I planned with my mom. Happy Galentine's Day! After dinner, we went to Walmart, where I gathered supplies for my impending Valentine's Day alone. It's called self-love. Valentine's Day is my favorite holiday, and even though my mom was going to be out of town and all my friends would be several states away, I was determined to have a fantastic day. Now, you can prepare to accuse me of being wrong, but I have found that the recipe for a perfect Valentine's Day is to just not think about myself at all, to focus all my energy on showing love to others. Now, this presented a challenge 
challenge for being away from anyone I knew on Valentine's Day, so I spent my afternoon stuffing gift bags to hand out to strangers. And now it's the time of the show where I make you sit through about 10 seconds of deepish thoughts. It took me a while to realize that focusing on myself was what was making me so unhappy. I think that's because we live in a culture that promotes self-love at every turn, and that works for some people. It is extremely helpful for some. But for me, I've always naturally tended to take care of myself, to put myself first. So when I focus on making choices that will bring happiness to myself, I always end up less happy. Focusing on others brings me legitimate joy. So I know, controversial this day and age, but that's what works for me. It's still a struggle. I do find myself getting caught up in myself a little too often, but I'm trying. <laughs> this looks very low class, but you know, it's the thought that counts. So I have 25 bags. This is the neighborhood. I'm not coming back home until I get rid of all of them ride around until I see somebody. Hi, do you wanna? I suffer from excessive holiday cheer and I'm just trying to make everybody's Valentine's Day a little better. So I made these baggies to try to be neighborly. Does anybody want some? Aww. You guys want some? Aww. Happy Valentine's Day. Okay, so I saved three of the last bags of candy because I decided I want to give them to some people that have to work on Valentine's Day. I remember back when I worked- Like a real job. I used to just fantasize about somebody showing up and bringing us like cookies or chicken sandwiches. But weird things happen when you're on your feet for nine hours scrambling around in fluorescent lights. So I wanna go somewhere where the workers always seem kind of exhausted and are always standing. Like a pizza place would be good for that. So I also like wings at Domino's. So I'm gonna go there. I did it, but it was a little odd because out of all seven of the people working there, they were all men. So I felt almost like nervous and uncomfortable saying anything about like Valentine's Day because I didn't want them to think I was advertising that I was single. I was just so uncomfortable that after they gave me my food, I was like, uh, here's some candy. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye. And I laid a bunch of candy on the counter and then I left. Did I pay? Oh my gosh. Okay, I checked and I did pay. Anyway, the next day before I could get back to work on the dress, I went with my mom to the dumpster where she dropped her trash can in like almost always. The things people leave outside of the dumpster. I mean, pretty big stuff sometimes. Like that. Now, obviously we can't have these little frill things sticking up. We're gonna fix that with this little guy's mama. That glue stick being the little guy, that glue gun being the mama, and that girl being the one who had to explain her own terrible joke. Now to keep the top from slipping, slouching, or slumping, we're going to haphazardly throw some zip ties on it and then glue them in place. I recommend using as many zip ties as there are members in your immediate family. So for me, for instance, that was six. Next, I decided I would film a rant video about why I didn't think the costumes of Little Women should have won an Oscar, but I didn't like the way the blinds looked in the background, so I put up a curtain and a curtain on. Good morning, good morning to you. Good morning to me, good morning to everybody. Uh, except those two boys that tricked me into drinking pee out of a juice box. Six. Why do I look like this? Well, I now have over half a million subscribers. So you, there's this thing that happens once you've made it, you're supposed to get some form of plastic surgery. So I was thinking I've got a little bit of a nest egg set aside to improve myself. So should I get something that sort of define my nose, maybe get a nice defined jaw? And then I realized the most economical way to define as many body parts as possible is to get LASIK eye surgery because then when you look in the mirror, everything's a lot clearer and more defined. So yes, I hacked the system. No plastic surgeries for me, just LASIK. And I can't wear my contacts until the surgery. So I have to wear glasses. Oh, and if you're wondering about my hair, um, I forgot to bring rollers with me to Florida, but I really wanted curly hair today. So let's see if this works. I kind of just wanted to look casual for my pre-surgery eye appointment that day, but with the curls and the glasses, I really had to put on a vintage outfit. And then I just looked like an exact replica of my grandma. Not exactly casual, but I liked it. I'm here for the LASIK surgery, but I wish I was here for the cataract. Jump in the cataract. Let's put some miles on it. What a cute, funny little joke. But just moments later, Makara was about to find out she had a cataract, and then she watched a cataract surgery, and it wasn't so funny anymore. Also, during that appointment, they gave me these drops that they told me would numb, paralyze, and dilate my eyeballs, making it hard to focus on anything and also making it so that I didn't feel anything. Look how big my pupils are. But once again, the thing that I thought was so funny moments later was very unfunny when I could not even see a foot in front of my face. Thank you, anti-focus eye medication. But if you have full eyesight while making this dress, I recommend that you take the full 54 inches of tool and...
honestly play Fortnite. That was the one thing the whole time I was blind. I was like, I just want to play Fortnite. But if you are truly heck bent on finishing this dress, I recommend you take the full 54 inches wide by 40 yards long and bunch it up as much as you can along the top, creating a skirt. I hate tool. I don't even know what is happening and I really can't see. The foot is stuck somehow in the tool and I can't get it out. I did work that piece out of the tool, but due to my lack of eyesight, I accidentally clicked slow-mo instead of time-lapse when I pressed record. I was doing so lousy that night that I threw in the proverbial towel and picked up my work the next day. I started in on the bottom ruffle and then I got hot so I changed my shirt and then came back and started back in on the bottom ruffle. While bunching up the 35 yards of tool that was left on this bolt, I left it folded in half so that it would be more voluminous and short. Then to make it sturdier also to keep it from flipping around and getting twisted, I added a ribbon down the middle. Remember when I said, how is it that 80 yards of fabric does not look like it's enough? Well once again the funny comment was not so funny anymore when I ran out of tool and had to get more from Joann's and it didn't match the original fabric. But plot twist, it actually turned out even better because I layered the new fabric over the old fabric and it gave it some depth. Oh wait, dimension. That's a smarter sounding word. That sounds like something someone who went to Westminster College would say. Is Westminster like considered a good college? I honestly don't even know. Like I don't know anything about any college. Well, except one thing I know is that it's wrong to bribe your kids way into college. <laughs> I do know that. At this point, I made another big long skirt to go over the big long skirt I had already made in order to make it match the ruffle that I would have to make in the lighter color of tulle. If I seem distracted in this clip, it's because that day I had just discovered the show Next in Fashion and I was quite addicted. And now I'd like to interject that you can just stop the tutorial right here if you want. If you're sick of this and don't want to finish the dress, you can just wear these various pieces as is. I could totally see Kendall Jenner in this. Feel free to steal my identity. Steal <laughs> my identity. Don't steal my identity, Kendall. I'm sure it's tempting, but please don't. I meant to say, feel free to steal my idea, Kendall. Oh, this is super Met Gala. Literally anyone feel free to steal or copy this idea from me. I am a flippin' butterfly. Or even like this. Like I could totally see somebody on the red carpet wearing a dress with this. I would think that was cool. Maybe I have too much of an open mind towards fashion. Though those of you who saw my Little Women rant video probably disagree with that. <laughs> and with like a super simple dress like this. Why do I ever have awards shows to go to? I have so many look ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, we've done it. I have found my red carpet look. I don't know why I have a Wild West accent. Maybe because I look like a tumbleweed. A glamorous tumbleweed. Now to add the gigantic ruffle to the top layer of your skirt, you're going to want to hang it up somewhere high and then pin it in place. Now seat yourself in front of an educational documentary and hand sew the ruffle in place. If while hand sewing you remember that your mom's birthday is tomorrow and you didn't get her anything, perhaps you could set up a little game. While out celebrating her birthday, my mother and I spotted a lonely orange in the middle of a parking lot. We circled the parking lot several times trying to run over it when ultimately I got out of the car and directed her. She found it to be quite fun, so for your mother's birthday I suggest you find a lonely orange. Yeah! Then I returned home and made yet another ruffle. Yes, there was a big ruffle along the bottom and the middle of my skirt, but you can't even tell there are two. There's just, it takes so much volume just to, I put in so much tool, there's so much, in the end it was like 140 yards and it still doesn't look as big as hers and I, so much goes into it. Her dress is, well I'm giving away spoilers. Make Ariana Grande's dress, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Well, last I checked, fun stood for F is for friends who do stuff together, U is for you and me, and is for anywhere, anytime at all down here in the deep blue sea, and this is certainly not that. Then it was time to pin the next layer of ruffle to my skirt, and honestly, this is when it started to look magical, and I was getting a little pleased with it, but that does not mean I forgive you for making me do this. While we're not on the topic of useful uses for this dress, I'd like to point out that the skirt acts as a natural coronavirus repellent. You see, the mere circumference of it won't allow anybody to be within 10 feet of you. You'll also find that it's very hard to fit through the doorway, keeping you from ever leaving your house, and thereby limiting your contact with other individuals. Okay, so to make the lace up back, you're going to tie a bunch of knots about a walnut's width of part into a piece of ribbon. Then let your sewing machine pierce through all those little knots while you imagine they're the faces of the boys that used to bully you. At this point it was time to sew the over layer of the skirt onto the under layer and I was so overwhelmed that I sort of collapsed and I hit my jugular on the table. It hurt so bad, I'm serious. It's like my dearly departed grandpa always said, accidents only happen when you're acting stupid. Then I ran both layers through. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Watching this clip I'm just thinking about how bad my neck hurt and it's so stupid. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that an integral part of living in an RV is downsizing. Downsizing the amount of objects you have, the amount of cookie dough you keep in your fridge, and the size of the projects you take on. So needless to say, I need to get rid of this dress as ASAP as possible. By the way, at this part I was floofing all the tool while watching Next in Fashion. Fun fact, as a 
a means of torture, I mean encouraging myself, I decided I wouldn't shower until this project was done. And now I finally get to shower. And now I'm going to transform myself from a Cariana Blande to Ariana Grande. Bingo game, try to be casual. Other uses for this dress include wearing it to not hoverboard, actually, that didn't end well, but to prom. And for added believability, I'm going to show you this dress modeled on my prom age friend, Ruthie. Mm -hmm. 